Pizza Delivery Horror Story. When I was 14 years old, I was spending a Saturday night relaxing and all I was planning on doing was watching Netflix alone in my family's cozy vacation cabin. It was a small two-bedroom cabin out in the country which meant there were no houses for miles, but I liked the quiet. My parents were out on a date and were probably not going to get home until midnight or so because all of the roads were backed up due to the snowstorm. It was getting late and I was waiting on the pizza I had ordered like an hour ago and was starting to wonder what was taking so long. Domino's is too far away from me to do a delivery, but a buddy of mine was a manager there and he was usually pretty cool about letting it slide. So I just figured it was taking a while because it was a pretty good drive and the roads were icy. I sat on the couch and decided that I was going to watch a horror movie on Netflix. After getting a bowl of popcorn, I hit play. When I was about five minutes into the movie, I jumped to the sudden sound of the doorbell. Realizing that it was the pizza guy, I sped to the front door. I opened the door and was startled by what I saw. It was a dirty middle-aged man. So dirty, he looked like a homeless guy living on the streets. He had long, greasy hair and needed to shave. The only thing that kept me from slamming the door was the fact that he was holding a pizza box and was wearing a Domino's pizza uniform, which honestly looked as if he had thrown it on as fast as possible. The buttons weren't aligned, and it looked like it was a few sizes too small. The name tag on the shirt saying, Michael Smith, looked like it was hanging by a thread. He was smiling at me, staring directly into my eyes not even blinking once. His smile gave me an uneasy feeling. His smile was so big, almost unnatural. He said, Hi, I'm Ted. Did you order a large cheese pizza? I said, Hi, uh, yes. And he was still giving me that same cold smile. I reached my hand into my pocket looking for the cash I had. Feeling nothing, I said, I'll be right back. My parents left the money in the kitchen. He quickly responded, Oh, so your parents aren't here. I wouldn't say that. This caught me off guard as I wasn't expecting a response like that or even a response at all. I was starting to get a bad feeling about this guy, so before I left to go to the kitchen, I pushed the door almost shut, leaving a very slight crack open and put the chain lock on, just in case. I rushed into the kitchen because I still didn't feel comfortable with that man. I grabbed my wallet and started shuffling through my bills trying to find the 20 I had in there. My concentration was disrupted by the sound of a breaking news alert on the small TV that we always had on the news channel in the kitchen. The bold letters on the bottom of the screen read, Domino's Pizza Delivery Man, Michael Smith, found stabbed to death in ditch, unclothed. I froze in shock. I remembered that the man standing on my front doorstep had the name tag greeting Michael Smith, and that he said his name was Ted. Chills shot down my spine as I put two and two together. I turned around, basically running to the door. I screamed when the front door was wide open and the pizza box was lying on the floor right next to the stairs. I examined the door, seeing that the chain lock had been busted right off. I reached for my phone that I always kept in my back pocket. I nearly cried when I felt nothing, and remembered that I had left it charging on my nightstand in my room, upstairs. I started going through all of the options I had. I couldn't just run out into the snowstorm and run a mile to the nearest house. I couldn't hide until my parents got home. That would be hours from now. The only option I had was to get that phone upstairs and call 911. I felt like my heart was going to stop. I grabbed the biggest knife I could. Not that I was going to be brave enough to use it anyways. My knees and hands were shaking as I slowly walked up the stairs, trying not to make a sound. I got to the last step and saw my room. The door was wide open. I started mentally preparing myself for what might happen as soon as I walked into that room. I tiptoed to the side of the door, making sure that I wasn't visible to whoever was inside. I peered my head into the room. Nothing. No creepy killer standing in the middle of the room with an axe. In fact, the room was just as I had left it. I could see my phone on the nightstand, which was across from my bed on the farthest side of the room, right next to the closet. I walked in there and reached across my bed. 
I was just a few inches away from grabbing that phone and calling the police. I inched forward and grabbed it. I took a big, deep breath in relief. Hearing the 911 operator's voice gave me a sense of safety. The woman on the other line said, 911, what is your emergency? Hi, yes, my name is Matthew Thompson, and there's a man somewhere in my house. I am in a cabin on 71 Shirley Avenue. I had said this fairly quickly. I had seen so many episodes of Law & Order, I had already known what information the operator needed. As the operator was telling me to stay on the line, something caught my eye. My closet. I always kept my closet closed because I was always paranoid about seeing into the darkness in my closet, not being able to see what was in there. Of course, nothing had ever actually been in there until now. The closet door was slightly open, open just enough to see two eyes staring at me. Those eyes were not the worst part. What keeps me up at night to this day was the fact that he was smiling, so big. I screamed and the closet door swung open forcefully. Now I could see his whole body, his face still smiling at me. I never ran so fast in my life. I booked it out of the room through the hallway. The footsteps behind me were never farther than a few feet away. I managed to turn my head to see the man behind me chasing me, still smiling. I threw myself into the bathroom at the far end of the hallway and locked it. He began to laugh, but this laugh wasn't like a deep, raspy voice, which is how I imagined it would sound. It was so high-pitched. It sounded so childish, which made the whole situation even more nerve-wracking. He was now throwing his body against the door. Every time I heard the sound of the man's body being thrown against the door, the man's childish laugh followed. I knew I didn't have much more time until that small chintzy door eventually broke down. But I also knew that it wasn't going to be that much longer until the police arrived. I quickly looked around the bathroom, unfamiliar with it since I usually used the one downstairs. My body was already halfway out the second I saw the small bathroom window which I had never noticed before until now. Somehow, after a couple more seconds of squirming around, I fell to the ground and was outside. I immediately felt an unbearable pain in my ankle, struggling to stand up and trying to make a run for it. I realized I was a dead man as I could only get a few hops away from the cabin with the storm as strong as it was an hour ago. An hour ago, when I wasn't fending for my life, when I was watching that Netflix movie, not having a care in the world about anything, and now it was all going to come to an end. I sat down thinking about my 14 years of life, thinking about the last thing I had said to my parents and my friends, thinking about the things that I haven't done yet. I could still hear the man banging against the door, followed by his laugh. I could hear the wooden door start to crack. Just a couple more tries, and he was in. He immediately noticed the open window, and knew I was outside. I knew it wouldn't take long for him to run out the front door to get where I was helplessly sitting. I kept looking back and forth to each side of the house, not knowing which side he was going to come from. Then, I saw him. Peering his head over the side of the house, only making his smiling face visible. I screamed in fear as this man, still wearing the Domino's uniform, was tiptoeing to me. He was tiptoeing like you would see in a cartoon, making his steps really dramatic. This frightened me as I began to realize how insane this man really was. He was about five feet away from me when I heard the beautiful sound of police sirens. There could not have been a better time for the police to show up because as soon as the man heard the sirens, he gave one last look at me, smiled, and waved, and he ran off into the woods. Over the sound of the wind, I swear I could still hear that man laughing. When the cops eventually pulled into my driveway, I crawled towards them, inch by inch, waving my arms in the air catching their attention. Tears rushed down my face out of disbelief of what had happened. They called in an ambulance and wrapped my ankle up. They tried to send me away to the hospital because my ankle was indeed broken, but I was not leaving until I knew that cabin was searched head to toe. I tried to tell them the story, but was only able to get out a few sentences. I know I barely made sense. After they calmed me down, they were able to get the full story out of me. I stayed with two officers and made sure they checked the cabin while two other officers searched the woods. By this time, it was basically pitch blackout, and my parents finally arrived. 
After a long, thorough search, there was no sign of the man. I got absolutely no sleep for the next few nights, still imagining that big, creepy smile. Fortunately, though, it has stayed quiet, with no signs of that man again. I hope I never see that grinning face for as long as I live. Who knows what that man's intentions were, whether it was to kill me, or much, much worse. <laughs>